Hello and welcome back to a new video about Linear Algebra. First I want to thank all the nice supporters on Steady. Today's topic is the QR decomposition for square matrices. Here I want to show you it for an invertible matrix, but you will see that the generalization is not a problem in the end. For this reason we choose our matrix A as a square matrix, which is also invertible. Now what we want to do is to decompose our matrix A into the product of two matrices, which we will call Q and R. Sometimes this whole thing is also called the QU decomposition, because the matrix R on the right should be an upper triangular matrix. This means that it looks the same as in the LU decomposition. So there could be values on the diagonal and above the diagonal, but below the diagonal there are only zeros. And on the other hand we have our matrix Q, which should be an orthogonal or a unitary matrix. If we deal in the real vector space Rn, we want here an orthogonal matrix, which means that the matrix is invertible and that the transpose is the same as the inverse of Q. And if we deal in the complex vector space Cm, we want a unitary matrix, which means roughly the same, but here we use the adjoint and it should be the same as the inverse of Q. However, we can summarize both things if we say that the columns of Q form an orthonormal basis. And indeed, that's the essential part of the QR decomposition. We make an O and B and write it into the columns of Q and also generate an easy upper triangular matrix R, such that the product of both gives us our matrix A back. So now please recall an orthonormal basis, or in short an O and B, is a basis where each element has length 1 and two different elements are orthogonal. Hence it shouldn't surprise you that the whole QR decomposition is related to another thing which is called the Gram-Schmidt process. In fact I would say they are completely the same thing. Ok then, let's start with the calculation. A square matrix has exactly as many rows as columns and maybe to keep it well arranged, let's look at three columns. So let's call our columns a1, a2, a3, which means each vector here has three components. What we now want to do is to transform these three vectors into an O and B. Hence what we get out is our matrix Q, also with three columns, which we call Q1, Q2 and Q3. Because all these columns should have length 1, we start by normalizing the first vector here. This gives us now the definition for Q1, which should be our vector A1 divided by the length of the vector, so the norm of A1. So you see calculating Q1 is always easy, but for Q2 we have to do a little bit more. Here you see the picture. This is the direction of Q1 and this one is A2. And you see by just normalizing A2 you don't get an orthogonal vector. This means that what we have to do is calculating an orthogonal projection. Then the picture looks like this and it's just a vector decomposition. And the blue vector we can calculate with the help of the inner product. Here this just denotes the standard inner product or sometimes also called scalar product and if you calculate it you get the length of this vector here. Then by multiplying with the normalized vector q1 you also get the direction in and you get out this error here. However this is not what we want, we want the orange error here, so let's call it a2 perpendicular. And how to calculate that you should see immediately because you can write down the vector and then you see this is just a vector subtraction. So you write a2 minus the blue vector here and this gives you the orange vector. You see it's orthogonal to q1 but not yet normalized. 
And this is what we now can simply do as before. We take our vector, a2 perpendicular, and divide by its length. Okay, and what we get out is our q2. And you should always read that as a definition. So this defines q2, and this one here defined q1. Now, before doing q3, let's first talk about our matrix R as well. Let us just use the space up here. Now, please recall what we want for the matrix R. We want to multiply Q with R such that we get out our original matrix A. So, for example, if you look at the first column in R, you have three numbers here. And the first one gets multiplied by the first column here, the second one by the second column, and the third one by the third column here. So, and this one should get you to the original column A1. In other words, we have a linear combination of these columns here and what we put in the matrix R are just the coefficients. Okay, then let's fill in the first column here. So I erase that again and now we look how to get to A1 by a linear combination of these vectors here. Now if you look at this equation here, you can bring that on the other side and then you have the linear combination. Which means this number here, the norm of A1, is exactly the number that you should put in at the first position here. And because there is no Q2 or Q3 involved here, we get the zeros here as we wanted from the beginning. So the idea is here that you don't calculate again formulas for the matrix R, but rather you put in the numbers you calculate in these steps immediately into the matrix R. Okay, and now we can look at the second column here as well. There we look what is the linear combination for these vectors to get out to A2. Okay, here you see A2, so you can put that on the other side, and there you have Q1. So this part here is exactly the coefficient in front of Q1, so this should be up here. It's the same idea as before. When calculating this number, you can store it immediately into the matrix R. And the coefficient in front of Q2, you see here, it's the same as before. It's the norm of this vector here, and you put that on the diagonal. It is not the same number as before, but it's the same idea. So you get norms on the diagonal, and above the diagonal, you will get inner products. Also what you see here is no Q3 involved and therefore here is also a zero. Okay, and now we are ready to deal with the last step, the last column in this example. Now we want to calculate something that I call A3 perpendicular, which means we calculate orthogonal projections and subtract them from A3. So the first part would be calculating the projection of A3 into the Q1 direction, which looks the same as before in this picture. But then we also have to consider the direction into Q2. So we also calculate this one and subtract it. If you want to do a picture of this, it would look a little bit more complicated. So I tried that here. So you have a vector A3 the directions Q1 and Q2, they form a plane. However, you have two normal projections as before, so the one in Q1 direction and the other one in Q2 direction. If you then sum them up, you get indeed the orthogonal projection onto the plane. And therefore, also the normal part we are interested in. Okay, and at this point, I think you know what to do. So this coefficient in front of Q1 is of course the thing that should go into the matrix R in the upper right corner. In the same way, the part in front of Q2 is the coefficient in front of Q2, so it goes into the matrix R in this point. The only part that is now missing is Q3, but you know how to calculate it. We just normalize our A3 perpendicular. So, dividing by the norm. And the same way as before, 
this norm here has to be on the diagonal of R, so here in this corner. And that's how the QR decomposition works. And now I want to end this video with a simple example with numbers. However, let's do a quick 2 times 2 example. Okay, so this is our matrix A and the question is now what is Q and what is R? Both 2 times 2 matrices. First we calculate Q1, which is A1 divided by the norm of A1. So we can rewrite that as 1 divided and the norm is, okay, let's write that in full form. 1 squared plus 1 squared and here's the vector 1, 1. And this is obviously just 1 divided by the square root of 2 and 1, 1. Okay, so this is the number we put it into R here and the full vector we can put into Q as well. So this would be 1 divided by the square root of 2 and here as well. Well, then let's do the second step. Let us use here the formula we know. So we calculate here the orthogonal projection, but here we use the second column, which is 3 minus 1. And in the inner product we put in Q1, which is 1 divided by the square root of 2, 1, 1. And then we multiply again with Q1, which is again 1 divided by the square root of 2, 1, 1. Well, let's calculate this one. This one is 1 divided by the square root of 2 and 3 minus 1. In other words, 2 divided by the square root of 2. We can cancel 1 square root of 2 and what we get out is just the square root of 2. And remember, this is the number that we put in the matrix R, so here we also have the square root of 2. Well, then let's do the rest of the calculation here. So let's just copy that and then you see the square root of 2 will cancel. And then what remains is 3 minus 1, which should be 2, and minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. Okay, and now we only have to do the normalization again. So we divide again by a big square root, where we put in now 2 to the power of 2 plus minus 2 to the power of 2, and we copy the same vector here. Now what we get is that this thing here is the square root of 8, or in other words, 2 times the square root of 2. And again, this number is what we have to put in into R, and here we find it. Okay, and then also our Q2 looks very nice. It's 1 divided by the square root of 2, and 1 and minus 1. And of course we can put that into the matrix as well. So 1 divided by the square root of 2 and here minus the same thing. Please do the multiplication with Q and R to check that everything is correct. And with this we finished a QR decomposition. Of course I strongly advise you that you practice what you learned here today. And for this reason I give you here another example where you can try out if you really understood the concept today. In this example the numbers should be not so ugly and therefore you can focus doing the steps right. Of course if you have any questions just use the comments. And most importantly have fun with the calculations and the example. And then see you next time. Bye.